So the first step here was to develop our skills of professional empathy. Here in this sketch, I am narrating to you how the collaborations or the research through collaborations started working or happening. It was not a one day um, thing. So we decided to do hands-on workshops in our individual fields of research. Basically it meant one day per one researcher for her or his team where she or he invites other researchers and discusses the challenges faced and thinks that as a group, we could try together. Important was that the presenting researcher is at the lead and others are following and helping the lead researcher to do her or his explorations. So by doing this, it was very clearly evident after the first round of five workshops that there were overlapping, uh, that there were overlapping areas of interest and inquiry to research among the researchers. What was totally unexpected happened and organically formed collaborations. Multiple collaborations was happening within the group and also opening up to invite external researchers to the group for a collaboration. So I'm gonna explain a little bit about how it went across. So we have uh, researcher one, two, three, four, and five as I'm moving my cursor and the lines, um, as you see, are moving towards this Nida art colony. The first column is the place where we were based for about um, about 20, no, about more than a month actually. And we had some workshops there and we were in a UNESCO heritage space. We had a sea there and we had forests there and some workshops in the building. And that was our materials and the context. And there we started working on the individual workshops, inviting the other researchers. But soon after that, the first workshop, you see the lines are starting to cross and merge and connect. This is where our collaboration started to picking up. And we had not planned that we would be having subsequent workshops, but it all happened organically that we were very curious to go into further questions which were opening up by bringing in other uh, researchers who were from a different field and from different research area to add to their expertise, add their expertise to our own research and do something else, do something third, which was not mine, hers or his, but something else. And that was with an open mind that we could um, flow further and take on some research. And here is on the middle, uh, I had a researcher coming from outside to collaborate with me. So we had opened up by then already to external members of the design and artist communities to um, come and join us in our research. So therefore, by the end of the four months, we know the answer to what they do in collaborations. So to sum it up, it is professional empathy was the most important skill to break barriers between thinking from different disciplines or even perspectives. Connectedness, realization of points of connection to each other's perspectives and research goals was another key to create collaborations. By bringing in the expertise from other disciplines and their research inquiries brought in enriched interdisciplinary collaborations. And keeping an open mind always helps achieving all the above. So with this last uh, slide, before we open up for the q and I would like to sum up also on behalf of SEMA and present the key points from our combined talk. Connectedness principle cuts across many, if not all disciplines. Importantly, there are things we can learn from other disciplines. Collaborative mindset and collaborations highlights the importance of valuing individual expertise and contributions. Though this is practiced in pragmatic ways and sometimes may lead to have serendipitous outcomes. Looking for the unexpected and non-obvious is keeping an open mind. The usual hidden ways of working then become accessible to mind and helps understanding the non-spoken codes. 
beauty of an agile network is when there is frequent and deliberate retrospection to bring in the customer or the user in the process.